Good afternoon and welcome to the second episode of the Exponential Files. Jim Lowenstern, CEO of Castles Unlimited Team, is your host and I'm Larry Laufer. The real estate industry has been around since the early 1900s. In 1960, 16, the industry practitioners got together and set a series of rules and guidelines. That's what a realtor is. In the 1970s, Remax embraced the women's movement and gave women an opportunity to work in, at the highest levels in real estate. In the 1980s, Keller Williams changed the industry again when it offered residual income for recruiting agents. This residual income is based on profit share and not revenue share. They're different. We'll get to that later. Then along comes Zillow and they snuck in behind the lines and made a deal to put all of the MLS listings on their site to promote more eyeballs. eyeballs. But really what was going on is they were setting up to gather the buyers from these listings and then sell them back to agents. In the last several years, some deep pocket tech people have created some agencies where they offered top agents money to jump ship and work for their company. Well, EXP changed all of that. They've changed the market again. In the next half hour, you will get a better understanding of how you, the agent, can build a business that can give you freedom and security. Jim, what do you see as the top three advantages of the EXP model from your new book, Your Million Dollar Month? Real estate. Mention that. Uh, three, three advantages. Um, well, uh, I, I think their um, EXP has changed the definition of, of income for real estate agents. Um, it was always linear. You sell a house, you rent a property, you get paid, period. Um, you retire, you stop doing work, the income stops. So, um, I mean, Keller Williams had passive income also, but it wasn't based on revenue, it was based on profit. So uh, EXP is giving out one half of their revenue to their agents that have sponsored other agents. So um, it's, it's a huge number and has um, created a retirement fund for agents. So that's, that's one big thing. Uh, the metaverse, the omniverse, uh, the virtual reality EXP world uh, was way ahead of um, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, idea. Uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of a, a modest company with incredible tech. Uh, so that, that's certainly one way. Um, trying to think of the, uh, the third way. Well, I'll just say Castles Unlimited is, is changing it in a third way. So uh, looking at EXP, not as a broker, but as a platform to look at their business model and their tech functionality as, as tools for any brokerage where they can still hold on to their uh, trademarks, their branding. And uh, EXP is, is the platform uh, to do that on. It's right. not a franchise. Uh, the barrier to entry is almost zero dollars and zero commitment. Uh, they want everyone to be happy, but if you're not happy, uh, my guess is it's because you just didn't have uh, the product explained properly and maybe you didn't have the right sponsor. But, um, you know, that's, that's sort of what we're doing right now with Castles Unlimited. Um, making our agents and then all of their team members that they're being chosen as sponsors for um, equity owners in the company. So that's well, three things. Yeah, that's, uh, that's beyond three. And um, let's drill down a little bit uh, in that. Uh, first, revenue share versus profit share. Uh, profit share is like that Hollywood game. Oh, you have some back end money. But the accountants can figure out, are we profitable? Are we not profitable? But revenue net versus gross. 
Exactly. Revenue yeah. share is top line. Yes. It's so uh, so uh, that is a much better share to have uh, because it's, and it's not a affected. transparent number. It does not change exactly. because the owner of the office uh, went out and he has a uh, lease on a Mercedes now that has to be written off. Yeah, exactly. And we're, we're not saying they all do that, but we're saying that that is an issue. No, but that's, but that's what net is. Uh, you have business expenses. I mean, whatever. It could be the office. You know, it could be any expense. And EXP said, you know what? The way we're going to grow is to say no offices. Oh, we have Regis offices all over the world. You can go to those. Um, but even before the pandemic, where everyone was working at home and forced to work at home in, in countries all over the world, um, EXP said, you know what? With the technology, supercomputers in, the, in the, the palm of our hand. Oh, that's a there you go. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, do we do we really need to be sitting behind a desk at an at a at a location different than our home office? And the answer is no. And well, the world that, has changed big. It yeah, has changed. All, big all that from overhead that. is is saved. All that expense is saved. And what they say is, rather than spending all that money on the offices, we'll give that back to the agents. Now, with our company, Castles Unlimited, we do have those brick and mortar offices, but they're really not necessary other than the fact that just after operating this way for 36 years, it's just hard to turn, turn off all that marketing and promotion and compliance and you know, back, back, uh, back office support for the agents. Well, it's not that EXP doesn't have uh, offices. They do. They have a deal with with um, uh, Regis, you know, thousands of offices all over the country. You can find some place to to park and meet with your clients, and do closings and things like that. And there are and there are companies and offices uh, such as Castles Unlimited where there are brick and mortar. And I have agents that you know, decide and EXP allows them in MLS to pick any office they want. Uh, I had one pop up and I reached out to her and we came out with a little agreement. Um, I'll never do it again. It was a great learning experience. And um, I don't I'm know. I'm confused about what you're talking about. That makes no sense. What are you saying? Okay. So MLS rosters, you, you, you know, you go into MLS and you'd go mm -hmm. Newton, EXP, and there'd be a roster there with agents oh yeah yeah Your yeah. name would be on our roster yeah well her name showed up one day and i contacted her and i made a, a deal with her she she isn't really in our on our team or anything but two days later she's calling me up and said where are my where are my referrals she wanted her she wanted to know where her referrals were now not only have i never met her not only do i not think that she's capable but that's another story she's only been in the business for a year probably hasn't done very much but she lives in another state on top of it she lives in connecticut so she's gone my my, my learning experience is you know no good deeds go unpunished that kind of thing i just let them be you want to be on our roster fine that's fine that's that, that's it you know I, can, I can't i can't really help them well um yeah there are some people that you can't help. That, uh, that is, if, if there's any kind of, of, of deficiency in the overall EXP model, and, and all I'm saying is Glenn Sanford, genius, genius, genius. Um, it's just that, that you, you cannot really, you know, there are uh, sponsorships and there's uh, downlines and uh, all the money flows up. Uh, but if, if someone's in a different downline, um, th there's no money there. You know, they're, they're, you can't recruit someone that's already been recruited, so to speak. And okay. there's no money to flow to you at all if they're in somebody else's downline. So that's, that's just 
the what you're talking about here is sponsorship, Jim. And so let's define what sponsorship is and why it's important to have the right sponsor, because you're you're talking around it. So a sponsor is someone who invites you into the company and is there for you when you need training, when you need questions answered. And it it's not the, the first person you spoke to. It's someone that you trust and believe can help you grow your own personal business. And for but me, sponsorship, it can also be the people above your sponsor as well. So in my case, um, the sponsor I picked uh, brought a lot to the table, but it was the people above uh, her that that really had uh, all the experience and the training that they were offering and the mentoring and the coaching and, and, and so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I have had uh, I was Keller Williams agent for a long time. Um, I did sponsor people uh, into the company. Uh, those people actually came over with me when when I came over here. But I think um, when those people call me and they have a question, I'm there for them. Because uh, one of the things I've learned about EXP is um, I was in a number of different brands and you're sitting in your office and it's very private. You don't want to know people sitting around, you know, who's your client list and all of that, because sometimes people will will go in and try and scoop that out from you. I have not found anything like that in EXP. Granted, I'm talking to people outside my area. What, what's your uh, what do you think? Well, uh, well, let's just go to the stock. Um, you know, if, if everybody's um, getting stock in a company that's traded publicly, you want the stock value to stay uh, stable or, or rise. Um, in the case of uh, stock, they, they give you stock uh, when someone use, uh, that chooses you as a sponsor sells their first property their first transaction. You get stock when you have your first transaction every year and you get stock when you cap. So that's just, just for starters. The other, the other thing is uh, there's a stock program where you can take 5% of your commission and buy stock at a 10% discount. You can sell it the next day. That's a 10% profit in one day. That's not too bad. So these are all things that relate to team building and maybe everyone wants the same, same thing at the end of the day. We're all stakeholders in this, in this company. And that's why you probably find the, uh, the camaraderie that you do. I, the other interesting thing is that every uh, agency franchise I've ever worked with, they all talk about how they're the best educators. And they usually it's it's someone who's a, a good agent in their office will begin teaching what they know from that office. At EXP, they have on any given day as many as 50 teachers from across the country, high-end teachers who you can just sit in with. You don't have to pay for, you're an EXP agent. You can listen to uh, them talking about whatever aspect. Where you wanna grow your downline, you wanna build a uh, 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 landing page, all of these things. It's there for you whenever you want it. You don't have to go to the office. You can, you can sit there and do that. I think that's a huge advantage. You have any charts today? Let's, uh, let's, I do. let's try something yeah. new. Let's put a chart up and, and have a little discussion as we uh, get towards the uh, bottom of the bottom of the hour. Okay. Well, there's a cascading. Okay. Awesome. Revenue awesome. Okay. Let's, let's, let's stick with that. Can you, can you enlarge it or is that, is that that's a, it? That's okay. it. All right. So what does that all mean? The first time anybody looks at this, they go, what what <laughs> what am i looking okay. at yeah so tier one tier two tier okay so if someone so a real estate broker anywhere in 22 countries around the world chooses you as their sponsor at exp and we'll we'll talk in in other shows about uh creating value and why people would choose you as a sponsor as opposed to 
the other possible 75,000 EXP agents. By the way, that's news this week, big news. We hit 75,000 agents. So tier one, level one, whatever you want to call it, let's call it your front line. They're going to they're gonna pay you $2,800 a year for anyone that chooses you as a sponsor uh, as long as they cap. Okay. This comes out of the company. It does not come out of the agent. Okay. That's important. That's, that's correct. And that starts with agent one. So tier two, and there's a lot of information on that, on that line. Um, actually, this isn't uh, the, the, we'll have a better chart next week, but it goes like this. So let's say that you have recruited, well, we'll say sponsor three agents so that those three agents are on your tier one level but one of those agents recruits or spot is chosen as a sponsor uh, uh for somebody else so that's tier two for you so people that your agents recruit are now on your second tier what happens is it's 0.2 percent the first tier is three and a half percent, and that's why, Larry, this is this is not a good chart, but it it's it's it, it, it forces us to have a better chart next year, next next week. Sorry, so it's three and a half percent on the gross revenue on any sale or rental that your recruits bring in. That's tier one. Tier two, it's 02 percent. However. And you see all the way to the right, it says five plus. If you've recruited yourself five agents on the first level that are qualifying, and that means that they've sold 5,000. What's that? Closing. They're closing stuff. Yeah, they, they have to close $5,000 worth of commissions uh, every six months, which is a really low bar. Yeah. But if you've recruited five or more, that 0.2% on, on the second level goes to, um, what does it go? It goes to 4%. So that's a 20x increase in that revenue. So let's say that you've recruited enough people, you made $100 one month on tier two, and you had only four qualifying agents on your first level. Now you now you have five, you recruited one more person in the month of February. That that $100 now is, what is it? 20 times 100? What's that? Is that 2,000? Yeah. So that $100 you got last month just became 2,000. You did the same amount of work other than you brought in one more person and that's it. So that's part of the genius of this system is that each time you you look at the revenue coming off of a different level, uh, you can you can have the incentive to bring in some more people. And I have actually seen their leaderboard where you know if someone brought in like one or two more agents, they would be literally making like a hundred thousand dollars more a year. That's incredible. So each tier there, it's just, you know, the people you recruited, recruit people, right. they recruit people and so on and so forth. Right, right. And uh, because it's revenue share, it, it's so much more tangible money. You can, you can understand it, you can see it. Um, one of the problems uh, with recruiting other ages is it's a different job than, than buying or selling a house, working with them. It's a different kind of um, understanding. Muscles. Yeah. And and people, uh, from my perspective, quite often, um, they're, they have this thing that they want in their head, they either want better education, they want uh, a broker who listens to them and can help them, they want more money, they want to pay less money. Those are the kinds of things. If you're not thinking about your business as a business, and you're just thinking about these little tiny little things, you're missing the point. The point is, we are a business, and this is one of the most important businesses there is. Everybody needs a house, wants a house, needs a place to live. Um, we are the professionals that help that happen. So what you want to do is you want to circle yourself around people who are really good at it 
and who can help you become really good at it because then we could serve our communities so much better. Well in my, well yeah. In, so, in so going, going back to the cascading revenue share, um, this is a different part of the business for sure. Um, it, it, it sort of allows the typical real estate agent, you know, someone that's never had to, um, you know, pay administrators and pay the, the rent for a storefront or, you know, buy the signs and get them installed and, and all the stuff that I've been doing for years. It allows you to get the revenue for all that and not do any of that work. Right. It's you just get to do the fun stuff. Uh, and it's amazing to me. OK, 75,000 agents. Most, you know, the highest valuation on Wall Street for a brokerage, um, 22 countries and headlines on in Inman News and uh, RIS Media uh, almost every day, it seems. And there are agents. I spoke to three agents today. Um, two called me about other things, my, my listings or whatever. Uh, and one had uh, a scheduled appointment with me to talk about EXP. And uh, none of them had ever heard of EXP. Um, and I know that there are a lot of EXP agents. They don't do any recruiting because they think, oh, no one wants to hear from me. No one wants to be recruited. No one wants any of this stuff. Uh, Larry, you can take the, the revenue share off the screen. I, I want to see your, your beautiful face. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, they say only 5% or, you know, something somewhere between 5 and 8% of all the EXP agents ever do any of the uh, agent attraction um, work. Um, yeah. So it's the, the, like the old adage, you know, with the for, for sale by owner, the, the broker for the office tells us 50 agents. You know, I'm going to give you a thousand dollars if you get this listing. And he and he called the owner up at the end of the day, apologizing because um, he was sure that the owner got 50 calls. Right? Um, you know, you don't even have to sell the house; you just have to get the listing. Not one of them called, and it's the same thing with the, the sponsoring. The way I look at it, I'm an educator. Um, you know, not everyone's going to join EXP. There, there's a lot of different. Uh, brands with a lot of uh, value out there. And, and I can list probably 10 in 20 seconds. Um, and EXP, because they're a platform and a company like Castles Unlimited, for example, sits on top of that platform, the public may never really know about EXP. Right. The agents, they put their name out in, in, in big letters and EXP brokered by exp it's all the way at the bottom it's time you hardly even notice it yeah yeah so, and, and that's fine for them that's fine for exp they they want to help the industry and the agents well i think one of the things about our show and this podcast is revealing things about exp that you know whether people even know about it yeah or explore it or um, try to expand upon it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that there's any way to expand upon it more than what I've done and, and talk about it in, in the book, uh, Your Million Dollar Month in Real Estate. That's I, coming I think, out next week or the next week after? Uh, I'll, 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 have it, I'll have it on Amazon in March. You know, okay. I can't give you the exact date. You know, it's in final February. editing, I know. Abs absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, so uh, we st we started the show with uh, me asking you the three things. Um, I am a, a performing a producing agent. I want to tell you my three things, and and they're more nuts and bolts. So before I was part of EXP, I had I used Bomb Bomb for my video. I had an email uh, a system that I paid for monthly. I had a CRM that I paid for. Um, I had uh, marketing that I paid for. When I came to EXP, they gave me all of that 
you know, there was over $500 I was spending at EXP. And I wasn't even with the top, the best stuff um, like KV Core is. Um, KV Core itself is over 300 bucks. Um, I get it all for $85. I saved hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars in a year. And all I did was, was come over to a better place that had better technology. I, uh, um, there were business model that allows you a retirement. Exactly. Exactly. There's there's no, there's, there's no competition. Nobody else is doing this. And I've been in the in the business a while, and I always dealt with it linearly. Uh, I have to save my commissions. Now I'm 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 also still saving, but now I'm I'm being helped by my company because they're sharing in their revenue, and that allows me to actually have an exit strategy. I just have to build it up and help people along the way. I love what I do. I love this industry. Um, and I can do it until I'm much older than I am right now. But after a while, my wife loves the beach. I love the beach too. Well, the passive income, uh, you can't yeah. do better than that. Yeah. You, you've, you've done your work and now your, your time is your own. Yeah. Yeah. And I always answer my phone anyway, so I can be anywhere and help you answer a question. And Glenn Sanford does all the unfun stuff while we get to do the fun stuff. The fun well, stuff is telling people about this, this company. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you have well, any a better chart next week, it'll, it'll, it'll be awesome. So uh, in behalf of uh, Jim Lowenstern, your host, he's on the top here and I'm Larry Laufer. Uh, uh, thank you so much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. We're, we're everywhere out there in social media. Um, or you can just uh, give us a call. Our phone numbers are there, too. So how do you like the new music? <laughs> that's that's rocking. Is that it? That was it? Just two? It, it's just a beat. Two, two kick jump? Does it keep going, though? Uh, it keeps going exactly like that. Well, you've got to keep it going and we'll fade out. <laughs> well, we we'll just did away. because that's all I took took out. Okay, we'll go again. Here we go. <laughs> okay. I, I think I can do better than that. I, mean, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna retire that one. Do your work. Give it to me. I'll put it up.